Hey guys, um, today we're doing a segment about how to raise baby chicks. Um, so I'm going to start with how to uh, set up their box. And you can do a cardboard box or you can do a plastic tote. <sighs> I'm doing a tote. Anyway, let's look at the size tote I have here. Um, my fierce dog comes to see what's going on. Um, here's the tote. So you see, there's my foot. So it's not a huge, really big tote, but it's bigger than square. Say hi, Spike. Okay, so we've got the uh, ads down. I put the shinier ones on the bottom because they're really slick for the poor chicks. And then the non-shiny ones on top. Uh, I like to do a layer of about three or four of them. Um, and we're gonna move into the garage here or the light will have to adjust, as will my eyes. Beyond my bag of miracle Grow, we have a big thing of pine shavings. Uh, dry Nest is apparently the brand. Uh, anyway, I really don't put much of this in because they kick it into their um, water and their food. So I just kind of sprinkle it around. Um, it's really good. It's kind of like like kitty litter, you know, that absorbs. It also absorbs their water and gets in their food. So I don't put too much in. But let's see, and I've got nine chicks right now. Um, that's probably more than enough. And uh, so they do get this dirty pretty quick. Um, when they were just a week old, and they have to change as often. The older they get, the quicker you have to change it. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna take this back inside my house into the kitchen where I have the chicks, and we'll finish the setup from there. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna show you how I fill up the food dish. This is obviously for food. Um, Anyway, so you can, I have a little bitty uh, shovel here that I use, um, but that doesn't get in there very easily. You can see there'd be like a lot of spillage. So what I do is I make a cone out of a random piece of paper. Oh, and this is a starter I use. It's Purina um, Smart Grow Non-Medicated. I do not give my, my chicks any medicine. Uh, trying to keep them as organic, quote unquote, as possible. Um, anyway, um, so let me see if I can show you how to do this without making everyone sick from the motion. I really apologize about it. There we go. I'll probably edit that out. We funneled it. Ta da! It looks pretty. So now we'll put some feed in. And it takes about two scoops. Maybe three to fill this up. And we'll put it in here. And I'm going to kind of hold on to it in the top. Oops. So you can see it just kind of stops there, so you got to wiggle it. At this point, you can turn the whole thing and let it sit down. And then I back it out, turn it, shake it. And at this point, I'll go to a different hole that's more empty and do one more scoop and that'll be pretty good honestly oops the whole thing a little bit you can grab it from the bottom kind of pinch it off there and then dump the rest in that's how just my little way on how to fill those up without making a huge mess even though i made a huge mess because i'm just trying to do it um without the use of both hands but so anyway We'll go and put this in the uh, the tote and go on to the next step. Okay, now this is for um, watering. We just have the standard bottles and with it. And then this is a watering dish. It's got one little hole there for the water to come out. Um, it works really well. Um, I've got the dish filled to, or the, the dish, the bottle filled the water to about here. That's the shoulder here. So it's not totally full because it does tend to absorb or get wasted a lot. Um, you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. So anyway, we'll just screw this on and then I'll put it in the tote. 
So as I walk it over here, you can see the water's filling up. Just hold it nice and level. Set it down nice and level. Now the chicks will jump up on top of this, try to get out. Um, if I set this in here, you can see I've got about six inches of clearance, but they're, some of the chicks are getting kind of big. So they're making it out. Um, anyway, I like space around each thing as much as possible. You don't want them jammed up right next to each other like that because they're going to try to get to it. Um, I keep my light down on this end, so I try to keep it kind of separate, like sleep and eat. Um, so what we did here is I've got my, my heat lamp. It's not one of the bigger ones. Um, so I had to kind of make a way for it to hang on there because it wouldn't shine down. And uh, so there's pretty much our setup. I'll angle that out just a little bit. So that's about six or eight inches above the bottom here. So um, yeah, that's pretty much my setup. And he's stay about 95 degrees for the chicks for about four weeks. Someone told me 20 and I said, there's no way those chicks are staying in my house for 20 weeks. That'd be through the summer. It would stink. It'd be awful. So now let me introduce you to my chicks. Um, wow. Some of them are getting some funny furs here. So where's this little bitty one? I don't know what she is. She is I'm watching her for a friend. Um, her little girl is in preschool and they hatched chickens. And so we'll see if it's, she's a boy or girl later. We don't know, but she's very friendly. Oh man, you guys really pooped it up in there. They are only in there for like maybe 10 minutes. Oh, stinky. Um, okay, so next I have Delawares. So here's a Delaware chick. She is about uh, a week and a half old. Um, sorry, trying to get the lighting good here. So she's kind of yellow and these with white and black feathers. So I'll get all the Delawares put in here. We have three Delawares. And Trace. So, and then I have one black Orpington. And black Orpingtons are really good layers. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out what to name my chickens. I always name them food names because I do use them uh, later for food. Uh, this is um, a Sussex. They'll be black and white speckled. You see lots of um, folk art stuff has those you know, chicks on them and that's what those are. And they're a week older than the others. As you can tell by the size difference. But then these two are Americanas and they're also bigger than the Sussex. Oops. Oh, stop fussing. So, here's one Americana. She's getting all kind of crazy or fluffy neck thing going. She's almost all feathered now. Um, and then we've got one more, and this one has the puffy cheeks. I wanted to highlight. If you can see how her cheeks are kind of puffy. That's um, a trademark of uh, Americanas. Anyway, the Americanas are the ones that try to jump out. So what I do is I take the lid and I put it down over, not over the light, but over where they can't jump out. Um, and yes, they jump out. They're so, I don't know why they're so skittish. Um, but I guess they'll get used to me at some point. But anyway, there's the chicks. Uh, you see, that's the horrible mess they made in there. Ugh. Uh, that was clean when I put them in there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what, how to do the setup for them. Uh, like I said, 95 degrees, uh, four weeks inside, maybe two weeks in your garage. My garage gets really hot, so that would be good. Um, it's been kind of cool the last few days, so I'm really making sure to keep them inside. Uh, once it starts registering pretty hot in the garage, I'll probably just move them in there because it's pretty nasty to have them on my table. Uh, I do use uh, Clorox wipes on my table, just so you know, before I eat anything over here, uh, because they get kind of flustered and sawdust and little down feathers fly. It's pretty gross. 
Anyway, <laughs> so that's my take on how to raise baby chicks at this point. Um, so uh, I'm going to run out and show you the coop and all that kind of stuff um, that I use. We'll do it in a different video. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate all my subscribers. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please click subscribe, click a like, and leave any questions or comments in the section below. Thanks a lot.